Hello everyone, this is Diane. I wanted to let you know what the new digitals are that I listed in my shop. I have um, five new sets counting the Christmas postcards that I listed last week. Right? Yeah, five new sets. So I'm just going to go over them quickly with you so you can see what's there. Um, most of them are the vintage papers that I found uh, some of the vintage papers that I found at flea markets this year, so I know that a lot of you were very interested in them. So I I have these vintage canned goods labels, EB brand. Um, so there's different sizes of labels, and they're just really pretty. Um, diced carrots, tomatoes. This one is a different brand, Barefoot Boy Tomatoes, and I included this little packet that had uh, photo corners. <coughs> I thought that was a really neat thing. That would make a great tag. Um, this apple crate label. I, I bought a, a bunch of these at a flea market last year. Some peas and pears and lima beans along with true orange soda squeeze from Meredith Bottling Works in Tawanda and I have the receipt forms, receipt blanks from Meredith Bottling Works, a pad of them that I got at a flea market a couple years ago. So when I list, I have a whole bunch of those types of things. So when I make a listing with those, I'll try to include one of these also, since it goes with the Meredith Bottling Works receipt things. And this is a packet that had transparent index tabs, Celludex tabs. And I just liked the packaging for that. So this is called Vintage Labels. That one's pretty easy. Um, let's start with Vintage Receipt 1. So I have two sets of Vintage Receipts. This set is number one. There are five pages in every set that I'm showing you today. Some of the receipts are blank, so they will be great journaling spots. And it has the perforated part on them. It's, obviously, it's not perforated because you're going to print it. But a dotted line that you can cut on or fold and just use your imagination to create with those. And then there are some receipts that are written on, which I absolutely love. This one is from 1888 in Tawanda, Pennsylvania. So a box that I had gotten at the flea market earlier, early in the season was... A bunch of receipts and things for this James Biles. So a lot of the receipts that you're going to see are from him, from his stuff. And they were in that wooden, kind of like a cigar box, I guess. And it had he had created some wooden compartments. He compartmentalized it. And there was a secret bottom. And remember that? It was exciting to open that. And all these little papers were folded up so small and tucked into and tied with string. So you can see the fold lines on these, and they're from the 18, 1800s. Here's another one, just a blank one, which is really pretty. And then this one also for Mr. Biles, 1889. Jacob, not... Well, this says received from John Biles, and it's signed Jacob Biles, Jr., so I'm not sure which it most of them just say J.A. Biles so it might have been John and a lot of them were handwritten receipts so this was on a pale blue paper and you can see how aged it is it's 18 something three I think it's 1873 payment in full of all accounts to their date of Jacob Biles. There's another three blank ones. I love the pink. And this was on the same pad. Those two were together. And uh, I this is 1861, I believe. It just says 61 here. Jacob Biles. A handwritten one again. And this is 1931. This is uh, 
These are from the trails. Remember when I found two batches of ephemera from the trail family. There was Nathan Trail from the 1920s and then the next week I found stuff from Charles Trail from the 40s. This is actually Charles Trail 1931 but it's a receipt and it has that eagle there and these are county taxes and I love that the year is in red. These are for Nathan Trail and they're uh, 1925 and 19 obviously 1926. These blue receipts aren't that old but they're just little stubs of receipts and I filled in because I love the colors. They're from the 40s and um, they're not with they're not for these people I don't think. I don't know maybe they came with the trail stuff. I don't remember but I just filled in gaps. You'll see more of them in the second set of receipts. There's another blank one from a union and this one was blank on the front but someone had written in blue ink on the back and it showed through the green paper and I thought it looked really cool but you can use this as a blank receipt and, and journal on it because that's just like background there and then another 1888 receipt received of Jacob Biles or J.A. Biles so that's Receipts 1. You could print these on coffee dyed paper or you could distress them after you print them and fold them up. See the fold lines? Um, kind of crumple them if you want to. Make them, make them look worn out and old. Vintage Receipts 2. This one is more mostly written on receipts. So you can see the fold lines again and this is from Jacob Biles, 1885, and there's a dog on that one. And this is a handwritten one from Biles, 18 something. It's scribbled there, I can't read it. Another blue receipt. Um, 18, no, 1927. This is from Nathan Trail, and so is that one. And this is 1925. And this one is from Biles, and it's all um, kind of torn and crumpled. Um, 1892. The amount of two dollars. Hummets Ferry County, Pennsylvania. Oh, county is left blank. Hummets Ferry is the post office. It's for a union. This is just a little yellow receipt. Um, it says trail, but I can't read the first name. It's not Nathan or Charles, but it's a yellow paper from 1925, 35, 1935 Metropolitan Life Insurance Company. This is just um, the stub of a receipt and it's blank. It's kind of hard to see the edges, but you can see them. Um, another receipt from J. Biles, 1890. Love that. And this is a tax receipt, August of uh, 1889, J. Biles. This one almost looks like it's hand done right there, but I, I couldn't tell if it was. But it's uh, another Biles, and it's 1890-1865. And then a handwritten one. Look at the beautiful writing. And then lastly, 1888 and 1922. This one's Trail. This one is Biles, and this one is Trail, 1926. And this set is called Antique Ephemera, and I put Biles in parentheses on that listing because most of these papers are from the Bile, Biles papers. Um, this one's 1891. This is a freight bill, 1883, to New York, Lake Erie, and Western Railroad Company. Union Station. Um, this is a little tiny uh, valuation 
your assessed valuation for the year 1886 is 3695 so it's a tax evaluation. There's another of the blue receipts. This is 1884 received. These are tax receipts. 1887 and this is a handwritten letter. If you could let me have some money on this account, I want to go to, etc. 1890, 1872, and here's a trail, 1927, and 1841. I believe that's what it says, and it's handwritten. Here's another blue one. This was all folded up tiny and tucked into that box. Love the blue color, and this was a pale green. 1857 handwritten receipt. There's another tax receipt, 1888 in yellow. And then we just have some handwritten things here. 1856 in the matter of the estate of A.P. Biles, deceased. I believe Andrew Biles was Jacob's um, father. 1858 and 1857. And so I have those four listings, and then, of course, I have the Christmas ones that I did last week, and I couldn't lay my hands right on the printouts, but these are the postcards that are in the vintage, it's either vintage or antique Christmas postcard listing that I have. Some really beautiful old postcards. So while my shop is closed to physical items, it is still open for digital. So I hope that you'll go on over and see what kind of digitals are available in my shop. And thank you so much for watching. And I will be back again with you before you know it. Have a creative day. Bye-bye.